Well, I'll be demonstrating direct modelling to you on. It's a typical plastic uh, type part, and this is a, a single solid model which could have been created in PowerShape. Uh, it could have been imported from any other um, CAD software package. Now, PowerShape has context sensitive menus, so when I select an entity like solid, we get all of the edit operations for that particular entity uh, automatically appearing on the screen. Now, the first area I'm going to edit is this um, slot on the part, and just so you can see the edit operation that I'm performing, I'm just creating uh, a piece of wireframe geometry around that slot, and I'm also going to create a new uh, coordinate system in the centre of that slot. And I'll use the intelligent cursor just to change the orientation very simply of that uh, centre point. Okay, so as I select the solid, I've got um, faces on this solid, which I can select using these new selection tools. Okay, so I can select one of the selection tools, pick one face in the solid, and all the adjoining faces are automatically selected and highlighted in orange. So, if I now wish to perform a, a direct modelling operation on this solid, I can come to my edit operations. PowerShape understands uh, that I've got solid faces selected and it grays out the operations uh, which are not available for direct uh, modeling and I'm left with the ones that are available. So the first operation I'll perform here is a scaling operation on this slot. So I'm going to make this slot smaller and you'll notice we get the blue preview which indicates uh, that Pache has found the solution and I can accept that and the slot's updated. You can see there we've now got the green outline showing you the original slot. So while I've got those faces selected, I'll now perform a, a secondary operation, which in this case is a rotation. So again, we enter the angle, accept after watching the preview, and again, solid updated. Okay, so very simply, just the normal edit operation, um, but we're doing this directly on the solid model. Okay, so I can uh, delete those two features, uh, delete the wireframe and delete the work plane. I'm going to zoom into this area of the model and pick this single face. Now at the moment this is one single face and let's suppose I wanted to add a detail or make an edit operation to that face itself. Now when it is a single face I can work on it but what I really want to do is to break this into multiple faces. So what I have here is a couple of circles that I've already created and one of the new operations we have for solids is the ability to divide the face. So I'm going to say that's the face I'm dividing, and if I select both wireframe curves at the same time, and say apply. Now that hasn't changed the shape of the solid at all, but what it has done is split that single face into multiple faces, and that now allows me to perform an edit operation just on the area that I wanted. So in this case, I'll select uh, the inner region, and I'll say move that down by a distance of 5 millimeters. And again, we fairly easily create a complex shape change to that original model. Okay, so dividing faces, a uh, fairly new feature uh, to PowerShape. So I'm now going to flip this model over and I'm going to create a new coordinate system. So I've got a reference um, to, to work from. And the next edit operation I'm going to perform is we need to change the draft angle of this rib, which runs right the way through the part. Now, just to check what draft angle we have, we have some analysis tools. I can uh, choose from any of the analysis tools to make checks to the model. So the one I'll use here is uh, the dynamic inspection tool. And if I just zoom in, you can see there we have a draft angle of 0 0.5 degrees. Now, I want to increase that to 2 degrees for the whole of that rib area. Okay, now I can do that. First of all, I've got to create something that I can use as a reference. So I'm going to make a surface. And to help me create the surface, I'm just going to start by creating a few lines. And I'm using the intelligent cursor to touch on the key points. I'm going to select all of those three lines and convert those into a single composite curve. And then use that composite curve to create an extrusion. And then I can either double click the extrusion or use the drag handles and set the length of the extruder, so in this case I'll have it at 10 millimeters wide. Okay, so that surface I'm going to use as the reference um, for the, the draft angle change. So now I'm going to start to pick the faces of this solid that I need to change. Okay, so all the faces on one side, spin this around, and pick all the faces on the opposite side as well. Like so. so the complete rib is selected. And then again, come to my solid edits toolbar 
and the edit I'm going to use here is draft angle editing. I'm going to say I want the draft angle to be two degrees and we're referencing the surface, the one I've just created. So first of all, uh, PowerShape works out the, the preview of this operation, so it's now just calculating if we can perform the operation. And we can see the, the preview there, the ghost image and the, the blue shape showing us what the shape will look like if we accept the changes. I can hit the apply button and that change is affected uh, to the model. So just the selected areas, uh, we've changed the draft angle, anything else has not been changed at all. Okay, so let me just show you a cross-sectional view of what we just, just changed there. So I'm going to open up my dynamic cross-section, walk through the model, like so, and zoom in. And if I just undo and redo, so you can see that's the original state of that rib. And with that uh, direct modeling change, we left the rib, which is that shape. Okay, so very easy to do, but that's a fairly complex change to have to make uh, to a model. And you can see it's very easy to do using our new direct modeling tools.